I'm Jay with Jay's Vintage Cruiser, and I'm here today to talk to you about the Suburban 6-Gallon Dual Fuel Hot Water Heater. So this is a pretty good little unit. Um, it runs on 110, which is down here, and it runs on propane. Um, just make sure that you fill the tank before you turn either one of those on. And you can run both sources of fuel, electric and gas, at the same time for quicker recovery. Now these tanks are metal, so they give us an anode rod, which sacrifices itself so that your tank does not corrode. And they require a 1 and 1 16th inch socket to take them in and out. So over here we have our electrical resets. When you're hooked into shore power or generator, those could trip. So if you're having issues with us beside, check those first. And then this is the burper valve slash pressure relief valve. All right, so let's go inside and uh, take a look. All right, we are here at the hot water tank in my 19 ERD, which is located under the dinette seat on the driver's side of the trailer. Now this tank is still in winterizing mode because the valves are turned to run with the pipe. So if you have used antifreeze to winterize, make sure you flush the system out before you turn those valves. You really do not want to send antifreeze to your hot water tank. Also, if you put water in the system, you can get water out of the hot water faucets, but there will be no water in the tank. And if you kick on the electric element, it will burn that up. All right, let's make sure we turn our valves to run into the hot water tank so we can fill it up and have hot water. All right, so before I put the anorod in, permanently, I always take and put a little water in the tank, pull that out, just kind of let it flush out so that we get a good rinse of the tank. All right, so we put some fresh Teflon on here, which has started to come off. All right, so we're going to put the anode rod in. We put a fresh Teflon on there. Now these are kind of tricky, but if you balance it and kind of turn it with one hand, sometimes they go in easy and sometimes they don't. And I have a one and one sixteenth socket on a little screwdriver here. It doesn't have to be. I mean, you don't want to crank it down, but that's all there is to it. All right, so now we're going to fill up the tank. All right, so I've turned the water on, and want to make sure that your burper valve is open so that the water, the air can come out so the water can go in. That way you get the tank completely full, and it'll work properly. All right, so now you've seen water starting to spit out here. So we can close that down. There we go. Went the wrong way. Now the rest of the system will fill full of water. Now, if I want to test this, I'm safe to turn on my electrical hot water heater, and I could even go turn on the gas, depending on full hookups or boondocking. All right. So this is the propane control, and we've got water in our tank now. So when you turn the switch on. The light's going to come on, and it will fire up the gas on the hot water tank. And once it ignites, which I'm waiting to hear it do, so there it went off, but the propane is heating the water. So that light only comes on when it's trying to ignite. All right, so... Now that we're done with our camp trip, I have turned off both the electric. Make sure the electric is off. Make sure your gas is off. Make sure your water supply is off. And before you drain this tank and pull this anode rod, you want to make sure that you release this 
drain off the pressure, and then open up your valves underneath your tank. I put quarter turn valves on mine. It makes it a lot easier. So I got those from Amazon. I'll post a link for those. So you want to drain the system and release all the pressure. Because if you do not do that, this will come out at you as a missile, and that's speaking from experience. So, happy camping. Hope you had a good time, and uh, we'll see you next time. Stay safe.